Well, I guess it's time to start off on another adventure, isn't it? Alright, we've done a couple of things since the last episode. I have taken that entire, it's called a spitter valve assembly apart. It just bleeds off the, uh, the moisture off the bottom of the tank. Uh, that is uh, fixed now. I have taken apart um, and gone in and cleaned the pressure switch and so now it shuts off at the appropriate time and so now what we have to do is i have i've removed the uh there was a, just a, a number of adapters uh and a quick connect uh, at that location right there on the tank i've removed that so now what we're going to do is we're going to put a pressure regulator there and then we're going to put one quick connect in there hold on we're going to run piping about halfway across the shop and then we're going to go across <clears throat> we're going to install a another quick connect uh, attached up to a hose reel at the center location the line is going to continue across the shop and then go into that far back corner where eventually we're going to have a uh, we're going to have a finished room. Uh, that's the plan. Uh, now we'll, we'll talk just a little bit about how we're going to do that. I'm going to be using this uh, Rapid Air uh, Max Line tubing kit. Uh, this is the three-quarter inch kit uh, because I'm going to be um, I'm going from one corner of the shop all the way to the other I didn't want to lose uh, too much uh, volume just because of the size of the uh, of the tubing and as you can see there is an inside plastic liner then there is a ring of aluminum tubing, and then there is an outside plastic liner. And it uses uh, compression fittings. And as you can see, we've now got a whole, whole pile of stuff uh, that we're going to use. So we're gonna go from the tank to this uh, rapid air pressure regulator that's also going to help take some of the moisture out of the system. Then we're going to come over to a T connector, which is then going to drop into this uh, block, which will have a, uh, a quick connector. And then you can see there's a couple of different reducers. These come with half inch outlets if you use the three quarter inch line. Uh, these are the clips. Uh, you get like 20 of these. They tell you to put them every five feet or so. So we'll have a couple of these um, that we're going to use to hold up. I'm using this blue uh, PTFE. And then they're also suggesting that you use a pipe thread sealant. So that's what we're going with. Um, I ordered my, uh, my hose reel. Uh, this is a Reel Works. Uh, it's got a it's got a three eighths inch line on it, uh, and it's enclosed. And I just I I, I can't tell you why I chose a, an enclosed one uh, over uh, the more traditional open ones, uh, other than probably this one was a little bit cheaper than than some of the others. You you really want to plan this thing out well because uh, all of these fittings. These are not cheap. Uh, you get a number of the fittings that are included with the kit, um, but if you are making, if you're making 90 degree turns like I am, if you've got a couple of jumps that you've got to make, kind of like I do, um, you have to think ahead and order your connectors because these things, they're not giving these things away. They're about 17 bucks a piece. Um, and the two T's are included. These three, 
are included in the kit. Um, there is one similar to this that's included in the kit. This 90 is not. None of this is included in the kit. So, you know, there's a, there's a little more expenditure. You don't just buy the kit and, and throw it up. There's some, some more things that you got to throw into it. All right, we're back a couple of days later and uh, I am slow like a slow thing because I have pulled a muscle in my back and about every 10 or 15 steps, I get a great big spasm, which kind of slows things down. So uh, the progress that we've made so far is we have replaced all the reducers that went, uh, that came out of the tank originally. I have a um, quarter turn shutoff valve. I've now gone and mounted my first dryer and regulator, which has gone into a T-fitting, which has gone down into my first quick connect. So now we're gonna make the run up to the ceiling, put a 90 in, and we're going to run it all the way to the center of the garage and then make a 90. So one of the things you're going to have to deal with is this tubing comes to you in a coil. And if you have a straight run, you need to somehow figure out a way to straighten that out. You can buy a very expensive tool. Um, from Max Line, uh, I'm not doing that. Uh, I thought about building one, and then, uh, sure enough, friend of the channel Jay sends me a message after we figured out a way to build this jig. He goes, "We're stupid. Look at this." And there was a guy uh, who just used sections of PVC pipe to straighten it out. I'm using a, uh, I think that's an inch and a half pipe to start with. And we're going to get that kind of straight and then we're going to lube up the inside of a one inch pvc pipe we're going to slide it through and that's going to it's going to get us close enough close enough for me I'm trying to be very very frugal with our cuts um, because this kit comes with a hundred feet and i'm i'm coming pretty close i'm i think i've got it figured out to about 90 feet and uh, we all know i'm going to screw a couple of things up so I'll show you just kind of the process of this as much as I can. Let's, uh, let's take just a moment and talk about cutting uh, this pipe. You may be tempted to um, use one of these regular pipe cutters. And what I will tell you, my, at least my experience, this kind of wants to slide around on it. And sometimes you see how this is canted out to the side. Sometimes it doesn't want to track in the same place. The other issue that I have found, at least with this cutter, is this cutting wheel doesn't have a large enough diameter to completely go through there. It starts to drag and you start to deform the end of that tube. I don't know how critical that is. I don't know if you can tell that I'm pinching this. This is a, a pretty decent oval at this point. If we can see when I'm twisting that around and we're not, we haven't even cut all the way through this yet. So this, you know, maybe 
this would work if you had again if you have a bigger diameter here um, there's all kinds of tools for all kinds of jobs so the cutter that I'm gonna now I don't know if you could tell from looking at this this is we've deformed this and I'm not exactly sure you know how good a seal that's going to give you so let's cut that part off this is the cutter that they give you which actually works okay my teeny tiny gripe with it is that if you're holding it in this position when you're cutting it this is going to want to catch right there so if you just have that in mind when you go to use this tool and you flip that little that little bale up to the top then uh, you can cut it off there easy enough you do have to open it up to get it to go around this three quarter inch pipe and when you as you are cutting it you will deform it a little bit the other thing is you have to be you have to pay attention because what they want is they want a 90 degree angle on the end of this for it to seat on your fitting correctly and I can tell you right now having just cut that that is not a 90 degree angle that's not a 90 degree angle so you have to be cognizant you have to pay attention so when I'm done cutting this I'm supposed to take my tool the tool will do a couple of things one it's going to if this is a word re-round your tubing so that it will go circular again and you'll notice as I'm twisting this we're pulling we're making a bevel on the inside and the reason we're wanting to do that is because we've got a couple of o-rings on this fitting that we're going to put on and then I go in and I just clean it out with a toothbrush <clears throat> So now I have a nice little bevel on the inside. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pinch my O-rings on this fitting. I'm gonna slip this compression nut. Then there's a compression ring or compression clip. There is a white seal on the inside here. And we got two O-rings and a couple of barbs. So when we crunch this down, this is not gonna wanna go uh, it's not going to want to spit it out. Now the problem is, with this not being 90 degrees, when I push this on here, here's my mating surface like this. The end of my tube is like that. It's not like this. So I don't have a complete seal around the top of that. So I need to go in and I need to recut that. And I found, again, you could do whatever you want to do. I found that if I rock it back and forth, it tends to spread that out. <clears throat> and then I'm, then I'm good to go. Oh, now I got to, so I cut that. Now I got to re-round it, bevel it. They want you to do three rotations. <clears throat> now I'm going to put that now I'm nice and tight against that seal on the inside I pull this ring down I pull this nut up and then what they suggest that you do is that you make this finger tight and then they want you to put a witness mark on there because what they want you to do is they want you to turn it three quarters of a turn after you've gotten it finger tight or one wrench there one wrench there you can so my witness mark is at the 12 o'clock position I want to get it around to this side make sure you drop the wrench <clears throat> my mark has not gotten three quarters of the way around but I can't tighten that anymore. So we have a nice solid connection there. 
and that's how you cut it and that's how you put the connectors on okay we've got the corner pipe affixed to the wall and before we could run the leg that runs this way and then comes out this direction we had to set a point and that's the point right there that is where the hose reel is going to be mounted and that is going to be where the next uh, outlet quick connect outlet is going to be which therefore determines where the uh, T junction is going to be so we're going to be just to the left of that to try to sink our clips into some studs um, there should be one 16 inches uh, to the far side to the left side of that so yeah that took um, this ladder is just killing me today but uh, what I did was I this right dead center in um, in the center of my of my I've got uh, joists uh, up there and uh, there are two of them that are located 10 inches apart right in the middle so I was able to locate those and then uh, we've lag bolted put some three inch lag bolts up in there um, the reels not heavy but you know we don't want to depend on um, putting you know drywall anchors in there all right now we're I guess this is as good a time as any to show you how we how you're gonna make one of these this is your where you're gonna put your if you use quick connects uh, these are your jumping off points your airline is gonna come in you're gonna put a T fitting up here somewhere it's gonna come down into here so we have to get this three-quarter inch tube to three-quarter inch NPT fitting in there then you have a half inch outlet you don't get any you don't get anything downstream from here um, you get this fitting and then you get this stopcock here that's what you get you do get this brass plug in the back so if you are running your if you're building your shop or retrofitting and you're going to run stuff through the walls then you can come in through the back um, and then you just put your plug up in here so we're going to have to uh, the manufacturer suggests two wraps of teflon tape and thread sealer on there and that's that's what we're doing um, so two wraps uh, pipe dope on the back then two wraps pipe dope on the top then for uh, for this particular fitting this one's going on the ceiling so I've got a half inch to quarter inch adapter um, I've got a male to male quarter inch adapter um, you could pick up a um, you could pick up a quick connect with a male end and skip this but I'm just kind of working with with what there is uh, and then down here uh, the drain valve stopcock whatever you want to call it uh, same thing two wraps and pipe dope so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this plug in here and I've already I've already wrapped I've already wrapped my um, my plug and you want to you want to do this so that your um, so when you're tightening it in there it tightens your tape up around uh, the plug it doesn't want to doesn't want to undo it um, you don't need a whole lot of this stuff it goes on kind of like oatmeal um, again you don't need a ton of it airplane and you'll probably have to go out and purchase one of these if you don't have one like if you just got a normal set um, I mean this is a nine millimeter some of your just kind of starter sets don't come with them this big um, let's give that another oomph <coughs> and then I try to wipe the rest of the stuff off of there there's two wraps so you can see again here's the tape 
coming this way so that as we're threading this in it's not wanting to pull it off of there and I only say that well you would know why because I screwed it up and uh, you know here we're all about screwing things up so that you don't have to the only guy who has made a complete stop at that stop sign in ages and his music is so loud that I'm afraid I'd get a copyright strike from YouTube so we just stood here for a minute and waited for him to move on All right, now we're putting tubes up top. So here's what I've gotten today. We've got it up to the corner, and then the corner run comes out about six inches from the corner, because I'm probably gonna have to run some conduit for some electrical cable. Um, something that I have kind of learned is that if you have a corner like this, expect to put a clip very close to that corner because just the weight of those uh, of that 90 degree connection is enough to pull it down uh, and then I'm all the way into the middle which uh, I and then I went ahead I I cut there's a two foot piece that goes there and then I have cut the piece that goes along back to that wall and then I've cut the piece that goes back past that far window and then I'm down about five feet um, from the corner because we have no idea what we're going to do once we get over there in that corner um, and I still have um, I still have this I mean this is that's probably another 15 feet left over. Uh, I've been I've been trying to be really, really conscientious about my cuts, um, just so that I don't run out. If I was you know like a hundred percent guy, I probably would have had this done a couple hours ago, but I'm not. Um, things that things that helped speed me up is this line here that goes all the way across the shop is uh, there's a joist right there so I can just screw right into the joist the the line that's going six inches out from the edge which I'm gonna do on the other side as well um, that one I've had to put drywall anchors in so I mean, it doesn't take a lot of time but it's it's another extra step and uh, you know right now it all hurts okay here we are the day after the day after the day after and we are plumbed up I have valves open all the way over into the corner just because I want to make sure I hear whatever's going on and then we will start Closing them up, looking for leaks. Okay, I got I got air coming out of all three. Um, I don't know what you want to call them, dump valves. And so now we're going to close that one up on the end and start uh, start getting our pressurized up and see what happens. Now something that will be interesting to see is, well I don't know, anything I guess. Alright, so far so good. We're at a whopping 30 PSI. Oh, and the, the leak that you hear, 
that's that stupid spitter valve again. Um, it's really, it's super positional. Um, so I, I don't know if it's just been knocked around uh, too many times uh, or what. Uh, we'll have to look at possibly replacing that. So I found the, uh, I think I found the special spot on the spitter valve, woohoo. And the gauge on my tank says 60 PSI. The gauge, the super teeny tiny gauge, which is the only thing I don't like about that, that regulator, um, says 50. And I don't, I don't hear anything yet. So we're, you know, I know it's boring, but we're just gonna keep going up at increments and, you know, see if we blow something off or uh, see if we've actually done it. So there's my very temperamental spitter valve. Um, and then you can see we're, you know, 130, 135, somewhere in there. Uh, and then here is my super uber teeny tiny valve gauge, I should say. I keep wanting to call it a valve, I don't know why. Um, on my regulator. And at the moment, I'm, I got nothing. I got no leaks. So now we'll see how long this holds. Um, in fact, what I'm gonna do is unplug my spitter valve for right now. And, um, I don't know what time it is, but we'll uh, we'll find the time, and then I got an errand or two to run, and then we'll uh, we'll come back and we'll see how much we dropped in the amount of time that we're gone. But yeah, so <sighs> things that I've learned: um, the stuff is floppy, so you need to kind of keep that into account if you're making big long runs. If you have a if you have a helper. Um, okay, that's helpful. Wise words from a wise old man. Um, you can do it with one person because I did it, I did it myself. I did have one, there was one instance where I had another person hold this big long section while I kind of walked it up on top of these cabinets. Um, but other than that, you know, you could do it yourself because I'm not a smart guy, you guys know that. Um, but I got it figured out. Um, the other helpful hints that if I, you know, if you were going to listen to me, which you may or may not, is I would put all these connections on very loosely and I, I learned to tighten them up um, once I got them in place. It's harder to do on top of a ladder, but then you're you're able to finagle you're able to twist the pipe you're able to twist the connections how you need to um and that's really oh, i still got to pop that one in right up there but yeah so it uh it works and we're happy and at the moment we're relatively leak free so the the extra connections are where uh, you'll run into extra money um, if you don't have any of the plumbing supplies that you would need that'll run you into a little bit of extra money as well um, you know i'm i'm into this for i don't know 400 and something it may be creeping up close to 500, but I only plan on doing this once. And this is three quarter inch pipe as well. Uh, you may not need that much, but I'm, you know, this is a, this is a 30, this is a 30 by 45 shop. So, um, uh, you know, I got quite a bit of reach uh, to get from one corner to the other. So anyways, uh, we're done. And now I'm gonna go ice my torn muscles. Uh, you know, be careful getting old. I'm not gonna tell you to not do it, but just be careful. Anyways, I'm James. This is uh, Rattlecan Fab Shop. 
You guys have a good one. Cheers. I hope you found this episode educational or entertaining or maybe even both. You might want to check this one out as well. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. Hit the little bell to be notified when new videos drop. And if you've got comments, make sure you put them down beneath the sermon notes. Thanks for hanging out with us here at the Rattle Can Fab Shop. Y'all have a good one. Cheers.